Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. This video is going to be about geologic history, particularly breaking down some of the events that occurred in certain divisions, um, particularly to this video, two eons, and quite a few periods that follow. Now, to keep this um, within a reasonable length, I've divided up, I'll be doing a video later that continues this, but um, this video is going to be focused on everything before the Mesozoic era, which um, goes up to the Permian period at the end of the Paleozoic era. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Now, we're going to start with things that are pre-Cambrian, meaning before the big explosion of life, right? So, the first thing that we have is the Archaean Eon. Actually, I think it's... Is it Archaean? I'd have to check myself on that. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. It's E then A. Unfortunately, I don't have the spelling off the top of my head, but the Archaean Eon, which... If you recall from my last video, I discussed how the geologic time is divided up based on how much interesting stuff occurs um, during certain divisions. Well, since this was a very long time ago, um, about 4 billion years ago, the formation of the Earth, to 2.5 billion years ago, that's a pretty long period of time, and it's because not a whole lot happened um, during this entire eon of time. Um, however, that's not to say that nothing interesting happened, and we do have a few cool events going on, such as the formation of the crust. So the crust forms during this period, or this eon, this division of time. Uh, we have our first rock records. We have our first bacteria, single-celled organisms. Uh, the atmosphere begins to form. And finally, we have our first evidence of what is called blue-green algae, which is pretty interesting. Um, hopefully you know algae as the uh, anaerobic organisms that you would see in, like, ponds or something. Uh, particularly large amounts of eutrophication has been occurring, um, but... We have evidence of what's called blue-green algae, which, for the sake of this video, we'll just say that's, that's evidence of early life. Um, I'd encourage you to do more research on blue-green algae because it is pretty interesting. Um, maybe I'll do a future video on it. But to keep things relatively short, we'll, we'll just move on. So the Archaean Eon, the big takeaway, we have the f formations of things like the crust and the atmosphere. They'll allow for our first forms of life, notably bacteria and other single-celled organisms. Okay, so that's the Archaean Eon in a nutshell. Oh, where'd I put my eraser? Give me a sec. So next up we have the Proterozoic Eon. Once again, it is an eon, which lets you know how long it is relatively. Um, and because it stretches for such a long time, around 2.5 billion years ago to 540 million years ago, quite another long division of time, that lets you know that not a whole lot is happening in terms of life, geologic activity, stuff like that. Um, but some interesting things that do occur, uh, big things, aside from changes, of course, you have to keep in mind, all throughout, things like the oceans, the atmosphere, the crust are changing gradually. But um, one of the first things we see here are uh, uh, Ediacaran, I believe that's what they're called, biota or Ediacaran life, um, which are some of our first multicellular organisms. They're kind of those, those, um, they look sort of like little fern-shaped almost, or oval-shaped oval uh, little organisms. Um, but the big takeaway here is that they're our first multicellular organisms. Um, they date back to around 600 million years ago, I believe. 
Um, and we also have our first oxygen dependent or aerobic organisms. So we get a little bit of development uh, in life, moving up from single cell bacteria to some uh, multicellular organisms and not just anaerobic uh, algae, instead now we're having some oxygen dependent aerobic organisms. Um, but overall not a whole lot of development in these pre-Cambrian pieces, that's why frequently all of these, uh, the two eons I just discussed are just lumped in um, with pre-Cambrian and we don't do a whole lot of discussion about them for that reason. However, now we're getting into the uh, Proterozoic, or no, excuse me, the, the Paleozoic era, not the Proterozoic eon, the Paleozoic era which contains the first um, period, the Cambrian period, which is very interesting for one big reason. So the Cambrian period was between about 540 and 485 million years ago, so instantly you can see that this is a much shorter period of time because a lot more is happening. And the big thing that happens is what we call the Cambrian explosion, or sometimes the explosion of life, because this is where we get a ton of development um, in living organisms. Uh, this includes huge diversity in both plants and animals, um, short time, relatively short time. So it's like you're getting a lot, a lot of progress in very little time. And um, I think one of the, yeah, this was... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is when the first shelled organisms appeared. Um, I think I know that off the top of my head. Fossils aren't exactly my strong suit, but I think this is when you have the first shelled organisms appear. So Cambrian period, big takeaway, Cambrian explosion, explosion of life. This is where we start to see much larger diversity, not just single and multicellular organisms. This is where we start to see some shelled animals, uh, more diversity in plants, that sort of stuff. That's a pretty easy one to remember. And then following up after the Cambrian period, we have the Ordovician, which is a pretty fun word to say. Um, and once again, this is a period, not an eon, and it is between 485 and 444 million years ago, about. Um, I'm not being perfectly exact here, just for the sake of giving you a general overview. But um, this one is generally, uh, generally known for, um, the, quite importantly, the first actual fish. Um, and other marine invertebrates, not necessarily fish, but other marine life. And these include, notably, hopefully you recognize these trilobites, you know, the little, little guys with the heads and then the, the bunch of little, and a couple of eye receptor things and they've got the spine that goes down, you know, those sort of things. You hear about those fossils all the time. Uh, things like graptolites, which are, are pretty interesting. They look like those little marks on rocks in the fossil form. Graptolithina, they look like, uh, almost like hieroglyphs, I think. Um, they're pretty interesting. Some look more like that, but uh, things like that. And then cephalopods. How do you spell cephalo cephalopods? I was never an expert speller, but I think that that's correct. Which, of course, you know, would be things like uh, squid. So yeah, Ordovician, uh, 
known largely for a large development in marine life, which makes sense. Marine development comes before terrestrial development, naturally. And then moving onwards, we have the Silurian period. That's another pretty fun, a lot of these are fun to say. Which is between 444 and 419 million years ago. And this one is known for not, not so much too much development in life, um, but we do see, importantly, the Earth's climate really stabilizes. Which is, of course, important to the development of future life. Um, and with that, we see that sea levels rise. And we see some other um, developments with marine life, such as our first jawed fish, Um, our first corals. And our first, this is an interesting one, first vascular plants. Which, if you don't know what vascular plants are, they're basically like plants that uh, take root, um, they've got stems, uh, basically they, they sound like um, modern day plants. Uh, that's the best way I can describe them really without going too in-depth. Just think modern-day plants. You know, not like those disgusting prehistoric ones. So that's the Silurian. And then moving onwards once again, we come up to the Devonian period. Now the Devonian period is interesting. for one main reason. Um, first off, it was 419 through 359, oops, 359, about a million years ago. And this one was interesting because while the first fish appeared in the Ordovician period, the Devonian period is actually known as the Age of Fishes. That's a pretty easy way to remember um, sort of the interesting things that we have going on here. Um, which is many new fish. If you could summarize uh, the Devonian, then I think, I think focusing on the larger diversity in fish is a, is a pretty good way to go. However, there are several other interesting facts as well, such as uh, first trees and forests. We talked about the first vascular plants appearing before. Well, now they develop into trees and forests. Um, this is actually when our first terrestrial life appears. It appears, but the fish still dominate, so it's the age of fishes. Um, the first terrestrial life. Uh, and I think this is when we have our first insects and arachnids. So you can thank this, uh, you can thank the Devonian for um, creepy crawlies and spiders and such. So the Devonian is pretty interesting, a lot of development in life, uh, a lot of marine life, but also the first appearance of terrestrial life and um, trees and forests. So that's a, that's a pretty interesting one, maybe second to the, uh, to the uh, Cambrian. Now the next one coming up is actually this one's interesting. They're, they're all interesting, you know. The carb, carb, in, carboniferous period. And this one's interesting simply because uh, here in the U.S. Uh, you may be aware of this. Um, wherever you are. But here in the U.S. we frequently divide this 
up into the Mississippian and the uh, Pennsylvanian periods, um, which I don't want to go too far into that. Um, most of the world, and even in the U.S., we, we understand what the Carboniferous period is, so we use this a lot of times. Um, but yeah, in the U.S., we, we have a, another way of further dividing this, which I will make another video on. Um, but for now, just a fun fact. But the Carboniferous itself, well, one of the easy ways to remember this is by the name Carbon, because one of the big things that we had here were coal swamps. They were widespread. And uh, Carbon, you may know, is, uh, along with sulfur, a large constituent of coal. Um, so, yeah pretty easy to remember the widespread of coal swamps. Um, not too much else interesting going on here, aside from the first reptiles. Those are the two big uh, defining features of this time period. Once again, I'll go further into detail on the division that America makes with Mississippian and Pennsylvanian. But for now, that's, that's a brief overview of the Carboniferous. And finally, we've been through quite a few periods in the uh, Paleozoic era, haven't we? But, alas, it comes to an end with the Permian period. And it follows that after the Devonian, um, Maybe, maybe about 60 million years after the Devonian, which is the age of fish, we would get to the age of amphibians, the next step towards land. So that was 299 through 252 million years ago about. And this is when we saw an abundance of amphibians. Uh, so therefore it was called the age of amphibians. And then, not much else really, there, there's not much to say about the Permian aside from, and this is a pretty big one that you'll hear about a lot, um, it ends with the largest mass extinction in history. Sorry about that, had a bit of technical difficulties with the camera. But, yeah, the, I think I had finished what I was going to say. Um, the Permian period ends with the largest mass extinction in history, um, which then transitions us into the Mesozoic era. So yeah, that was the general geologic history. Um, a brief overview, hopefully it was uh, sufficient um, of everything from the Precambrian up through the Paleozoic era. Uh, just based on the length of this video, I might break up. Um, I had originally planned to do one video just on the rest of it, but I might break that up into one era per video because we've still got two more to cover, and the, the, there is quite a bit to talk about in those. Um, but for now, yeah. Hopefully this was informative, otherwise good review. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. Now of course one of the first things you notice when you look at this is you say, well, wait a minute, the Earth isn't 542 million years old, so what came before this? Well, 